We see that the enemy soul's kind of pushing by herself. We're gonna rotate over with the Cali. We hit over there too. Cali's able to clean her up. Now we're gonna kind of rotate back, start hunting the enemy team. Erlong's on the Kuzumbo, so we're gonna start making our way there. Babiaga and Mulan are also there. We're gonna set up our Obelisk. We use our two, we miss our two. We're just gonna land some basics. What a great obelisk. He is pinned there and there's nothing he can do. We're able to get the pick onto the Erlong. We use our ultimate to get the set. Now we're going to be making a play for the Baba Yaga. She's in her ultimate. We're able to get a triple kill. Now we're just going to focus this Mulan. We use our obelisk. We pin her to the wall. And we're able to get a quad or kill right there. Our team definitely helped us up right there. But our build allowed us to just kind of bypass all those protections and just melt the enemy team. What a do, skibbity boo, it's your boy Shawnee B Gaming, and today we have a viewer request to play on her as Carrie. If you are new to the channel, I upload every single day. I add some commentary to a game that I've already played with the intention of seeing what went right and what went wrong, and hopefully there's something that we can learn together. If you are a returning viewer, on her is the last hunter I do not have a guide for. Honor is pretty average, I feel like. I think if you can land his abilities together, he does some damage, but he doesn't do anything the best. So let's go ahead and jump into his kit. On her is one is shifting sands. On her is going to summon an obelisk with sand around it. The surrounding sand is going to slow enemy movement and increase the damage of on her's basic attacks against targets in the sand. As you level this ability up, the slow is going to increase from 15% to 35% and the damage buff for basic attacks is going to go up from 8% to 20%. It's going to last for 7 seconds. On hers 2 is Impale. On her is going to throw his spear in a line attack and it's going to pass through enemy minions. If it hits an enemy god, they're going to take damage and are knocked back, and if the god is knocked back into a wall, they're going to become stunned. Enemies hit by a push god are also going to take damage. As you level up this ability, the stun duration is going to increase from 1.1 second to 1.5 seconds. On hers 3 is Disperse. On her is going to jump into the air and then wherever he lands is going to knock back enemies. This ability just recently received a buff so the animation is a little bit quicker. On hers ultimate is Desert Fury. On her is going to become CC immune and he's going to throw 8 spears. These spears are going to pass through multiple gods and they can even pass through walls. And on hers passive and feeble. On her spear attacks reduce the enemy target's physical protections by 20 for 3 seconds. So we are laned with a Kuzumbo. Kuzumbo does have some early pressure so we gotta kinda be ready for whenever he tries to pressure somebody. He dashes through too. He gets pulled. He's looking pretty weak. We're gonna try to get some basics on the enemy. We're gonna jump. Knock back the Mulan. Use our 2. Get her into the wall. Get some basics on her. She uses a Cursed Ankh. We're able to get the pick onto the Mulan. Kuzumbo then pulls back the soul, and we're able to get a double kill. A little excellent bait and switch to start the game off. We see that the enemy is also pretty deep in our side of the jungle, so we're gonna fall back, see if there's anything we can do. Poseidon's able to get the pick on set. We jump onto the Baba Yaga, but she uses her bees so she does not become knocked up. We're gonna use our two, knock her into the wall, and we're able to clean her up with a basic attack absolutely excellent way to start the game so in terms of the leveling order at level one you want to put a point into your two then at level two you want to put a point into your three just so you have an escape in case you need it level three put a point into your one then we're going to want to max out our one max out our ultimate whenever we can we're able to stun the Mulan into a wall then we want to max out our one and then finally max out our three we're going to go ahead and fall back. We're going to go for our purple buff. The purple buff is going to increase our attack speed and it's also going to reduce the enemy protections if they stand too close to us. We're doing something a little bit different with the build. We're going to be skipping Hunter's Blessing and we're going to go, be going straight into Transcendence. So the start is going to be tier 2 of Transcendence and then we're going to buy 5 health potions and a mana potion. Kuzumbo is being super aggressive. I love it. We are looking kind of low on mana. But we do have enough money to get Transcendent. So we're going to go ahead and back and buy that. 
Transcendence is going to provide us 35 power, 300 mana, and 10 MP5. It has a passive that we're permanently going to gain 15 mana per stack, and it can stack up to 50 times. One stack for an enemy minion kill, and five stacks for an enemy god kill. It also converts 3% of your mana into physical power. Whenever it is fully evolved, it is going to gain 10% cooldown reduction. Whenever it's fully stacked, it is going to have about 75 power. So it's going to be a pretty large power spike pretty early on in the game. Our Kuzumbo back, so we're just going to want to hang out. We don't really want to take a 2v1 fight. We're going to get our 2 off onto the wave and then jump back. Looks like they're falling back, so we're going to step up a little bit. We just hit level 5, so we have our ultimate. On her is ultimate chunks early game. So we want to try to use this pretty early on. We're going to use our 2 on the wave. Once we get the wave advantage, we're going to go ahead and summon a 1 behind the soul. We accidentally misclick right there. We tried to summon it behind her. Didn't work, so we brought it up. We're going to hit her with some basics. We miss our 2. We're going to go ahead and use our ultimate. Kind of pre-fire her, and Kuzumbo is able to get the pick. We definitely didn't need to summon a 1 right there, but we are going to get some bonus damage on the minions because they're standing in the sands. It's only 8% bonus damage at level 1, but it can scale up to 20% bonus damage, and that's why we're going to want to level up this ability second over our jump. We're going to want to use our jump to either initiate or to get out of fights. It doesn't really matter how much damage it does. We're going to go ahead and pick up the enemy purple. Mulan is here. We will kind of tussle with her. We miss our 2. Soul is here, we're going to want to fall back now that Soul is here, and that we missed our 2. If we didn't miss our 2, we might have stuck around and tried to fight right there. We're going to jump. We missed the knockup. We summon the, the pillar. That's going to apply as slow. She uses her cursed onk. We do have our Aegis. We're going to go ahead and Aegis. And we're able to safely fall back to our tower. Thanks. I think we are playing with the Poseidon and with the Kali of this game, so we do have some comms with our mid and our jungler. Soul is looking to get her ult off. She misses or is unable to get the pick onto the Kuzumbo. We need about 350 more gold to get the attack speed boots that we want, so we're going to try to hang out in lane a little bit longer. Just get some basics off from a distance. We're going to fall back here. The enemy sets here. We're going to jump away. He hits us with his one. We try to summon our... I want to call it totem. It's not a totem. It's an obelisk. We're just going to call it summoning our one. Unfortunately, Set was able to get us. We jump away, but the distance from his one was able to catch up to us and slow us. I don't think if we summoned or did not summon R1, we would have gotten out of there. I think Set kind of had us dead to rights right there. So we only left Fountain with the Tier 2 boots. Unfortunately, we did not have enough money for the Tier 3 boots. Kuzumbo is able to clean up the enemy's soul. Looks like Baba Yaga is rotating to the team fight. We're going to try to catch up to this fight, see if there's anything we can do. We do have our ultimate. Mulan's able to get a pick onto the Poseidon. We get our two off, and Kali's able to clean up the Mulan. She's going to get the heal from that. Baba Yaga's here. We missed one too many things. If we would have hit a basic, there's a chance we would have been able to get the pick with our ultimate. We're going to go ahead and fall back and start getting this purple buff with the Kuzumbo. We're going to set up a ward. That's exactly where Set came from last time. Let's see if our ward will catch him rotating to us again. Your middle tower is under attack. Right now, our main focus is stacking Transcendence. We will try to participate in any kind of fights that happen in our side of the map. But we're really just focused on stacking right now. 
We step back so Soul's not able to get the pick onto the Harpy. We're gonna throw up our one that's gonna apply his slow. Kuzumbo takes Mulan for a circle. We're gonna jump out of this. No need to stick around and the Mulan ult. We're gonna go ahead and fall back. Start working on the minions. Summon our two. We're gonna use our ultimate, but Soul is able to ult us. We needed to ult the pool from Mulan. And we were a little late on that. She pulled us and then we ulted. And that kind of reduced our movement. So Soul's ultimate was able to just rain down on us. And get the pick on us. The first death was a gank. I don't think there was too much we could have done there. Other than have wards. That second one we probably could have played a little bit better. If we, our mechanics were a little bit smoother. We just needed to push our buttons better essentially. Stand in our way again. Kali's kind of rotating over to right, but it looked like the enemy team was falling back to their side of the map. Sol is in mid. If we can help this Kali get a pick, we absolutely will. But it looks like she's a little too far for us. Your team has destroyed a Kali's gonna jump in. There's two people weak. She's going after the Soul because Soul is her target. We jump, we get the knock up, we hit her with a basic. One more basic would have done it. Our two falls just short, but Callie's able to rotate in and clean that up. So that's gonna be an assist for us. We did not get the assist on the soul. We just hit level nine, so we have a small level advantage over the enemy's soul. We're gonna go ahead and pick up our purple buff. Go ahead and work on the Harpy that's right here because the enemy minions are stuck at the enemy tower right now, attacking our minions. An ally has been slain. That's a bummer. Looks like we didn't miss any XP, so we're going to go ahead and clear this wave. Almost fully stacked. Once we're fully stacked, we're going to get that 10% cooldown reduction, which is going to be very helpful. Soul uses her ultimate. We get tagged by it once, but we're able to step out of the rest. Soul's able to poke us with her too. We're going to want to fall back here. Soul does have lifesteal online already. So she's going to be able to regen a lot of the damage that we do. We just missed our two. And we got hit by her too. So we've kind of lost our ability to get lane pressure right here. We're just going to want to fall back. Play it safe. Doesn't look like she's going to pressure us. So we're just going to clear the minions and kind of fall back. Both supports have rotated to mid. More work for you to do. We're going to set up a ward. Soul does have her two charged up. Right here, we miss our two onto the soul again. So Soul's going to be able to outclear our minions before we can outclear her minions. We're being kind of aggressive. We're trying to use our abilities on the enemy soul. Unfortunately, we're just whiffing them. If we were trying to get lane pressure, we would just use our two on the minion wave and then try to turn our attention to the soul. That's too bad. Sorry. No I'm just so hungry right Thanks now. For your service. So let's see if we mix it up at all this wave. We get tagged by that. We're probably going to play it a little careful because we're in yellow health. We're just going to fall back, play it safe. We're not missing any gold or XP right here. Callie's rotating in. Since Callie is here, we're going to step up, try to look like tasty bait. But since Soul fall, fell all the way back to her tower, chances are that they have wards and that the Soul knows that our Callie is nearby. Three people in mid. We're going to go ahead and drop our purple buff. This does get us pretty weak. We're thinking about backing, but we only need a little bit more money in order to get Aussie. So we're just going to hang out a little bit longer. This is very greedy. If we go down, this is definitely a preventable death. The enemy team is on our red buff. Looks like Anubis is rotating to the team fight. We're able to dodge the soul ability. We're able to... Ooh, we got tagged twice there. We are very weak. We just need to hit this minion wave. And then we're going to fall back. Bobby Aga's here. We're going to jump away. We're able to knock her up. 
do a little wiggle wiggle, but we heard her cast her ability and we didn't know what shape it was going to take, so we go ahead and pop our Aegis just to ensure that we get out. Cancel that. Cancel that. We have enough money for Aussie. Aussie is going to provide us 20 power, 20% lifesteal, 25% attack speed, and 15 flat penetration. It's passive. If you drop below 35% health, you're going to gain an additional 30% lifesteal for 5 seconds. This can only occur once every 15 seconds. Right there, we try to do on her as combo. Usually you can summon the obelisk and then use your two and try to pin somebody to the obelisk. This is going to, one, set you up for a lot of damage because they're inside the obelisk, so they're gonna be slowed and they're also going to be taking additional damage from your basic attacks. We're gonna start marching up right lane. It's not too big of a concern that they were able to get our tower. Soul hasn't really kept us in our tower line. There have been times that we've fallen back to our tower, but we've been pretty healthy. It's not like we were going to die if that tower was not there. We're going to go ahead and drop our Harpy. Our purple buff is about to respawn, so we're going to go ahead and work on this. Our team's rotating to the Gold Fury, so after purple buff, we're going to want to turn our attention to the Gold Fury. Enemy minions are also caught on the enemy tower, so we're not going to be able to hit them anyway. We're going to summon our one, so we get the increased damage onto the Gold Fury. Soul comes in, ults. We're thinking about just keep working on the Gold Fury, but Baba Yaga's here. So now we're going to step out so nobody can deal damage unless somebody steps in. We're going to jump in. We get the knock up onto one. We kind of waste our ultimate there. We were focused on one person, and then we turned our attention to another. We summon a pillar. We throw our two. Anubis is able to clean somebody up. We're going to try to help this Kuzumbo out. He pushes them on. Sidon uses his ultimate. Anubis is also here, and they're able to clean up the Mulan. We're going to go ahead and fall back to our lane, clean up the minions, because they do have a fat minion wave here. Looks like Anubis is still kind of tussling, so after this minion wave, we might rotate back into the left jungle. Anubis goes down. It looks like Baba Yaga and Erlang are both going back mid. So we're going to go ahead and push one more minion wave. We're letting our minions deal the tower damage for us. We're going to go ahead and rotate mid. See if we can help our Poseidon out. Doesn't look like he really needs it. So we're just going to go ahead and back. After going into Aussie, we're going to be going into Kinsize. Kinsize is going to provide us 40 power and 20% attack speed. It has a passive that our basic attacks are going to deal physical damage equal to 3% of the target's maximum health. This can scale up, so if the enemy has over 2000 health, it's going to scale up from 3% to 5% if the enemy has 2750 health. On my way. The hunter has become so with Quinsai, we're generally going to want to build a lot of attack speed, so that way we're getting more autos off and we have a higher chance of removing 3% of the enemy's health. We see two people kind of pushing us, so we're just going to fall back. Set's here, we're going to summon our pillar, we miss our two. We missed a lot of twos this game. We're going to keep rotating in, trying to get some basics onto this set. We're going to jump away because he tried to engage on us. Set is now on the Kuzumbo. We're going to summon a pillar. Anubis is able to get the pick onto the set. Mulan's here. We're just going to ult her. Goodbye, Mulan. We kind of get body blocked right there. There's still a bit of a team fight going on, so we're going to try to rotate and help wherever we can. We knock the Erlon out of our team. That might have helped our team, or it might have ruined the CC train. Not entirely sure. We're able to get the pick onto the Erlong from the setup from Kuzumbo and Kali. Kali blinks in, gets the stun. We're going to summon a pillar that's going to apply the slow. We used R2 to get some damage off. She beats it, and Kali was able to clean up the soul. So we pretty much just wiped their entire team. So we're going to go ahead and make a play for the Gold Fury. We should be able to get this without any contestion. 
I'm assuming that Callie dropped a purple. We're gonna go ahead and pick it up. Jump over the wall. Another fat minion way for us. We're gonna go ahead and clean this up. Three people in mid. Looks like we are winning the team fight, the 3v3 and mid. With Kuzumbo here, we're gonna go ahead and just get this tower. Go ahead and clear the minion wave. We have a small minion wave pushing up, so it's probably not worth trying to make a play for this tier two tower. Mulan's pretty deep in mid. Kuzumbo throws his little turtle, so we're gonna start attacking the tower. Soul is rotating in, so we're gonna start falling back. If Soul was not there, we probably would have gotten that tower. Bobby Yaga's here. We're gonna set up our one, kind of slow her down, jump on her, be super aggressive. Now we're gonna fall back because we did not see that Mulan. We originally jumped. Ooh, we need to we need to fall back. We kind of panic beads and use our Aegis. We really just needed our Aegis if we needed anything at all. We miss our two onto the Baba Yaga. We hit her a couple times with her ultimate. I think if we would have hit one more spear on her, she would have gone down. We have plenty of money for Quinsai, so we're gonna go ahead and pick that up. Next, we're gonna be going into Atalanta's bow. Atalanta's bow is going to provide us 25 power, 20% attack speed, and 20% penetration. If we get a kill or an assist, we're going to gain Atalanta's agility, which is going to increase our attack speed by 20% and decrease movement speed penalties by 30% for 10 seconds. We're really getting this item because it has attack speed and it has percent penetration. So we do have some flat penetration from Aussie, but we don't have any percent penetration yet. Flat penetration is going to remove that amount. We're going to use our one to ruin Mulan's back. We're going to get a basic on her. We're going to try to jump on her, be aggressive. We hit her with a two into the wall. We're just going to clear this red buff. We're going to use our ultimate. We're able to get some damage onto this set. Mulan's here. We're going to get some basics off. Now that we have Quinsai, we're just trying to land as many basics as possible. A lot of people here. We're going to jump over the wall. This is not our fight. So what we did there was if you can get the obelisk to summon under somebody who's backing, it's going to move them and cancel their back. We use our one to create a little bit of separation there. And we're going to keep looping back, trying to stay in the back line of this fight. We miss our two. We're going to try to get some basics. We do have our jump if we really need to get out of here. We really need to get out of here, so we're going to jump away. We're going to get the tier two of Adelina's bow, which doesn't really help us out too much. Just gives us a little bit more attack speed. So we got some good damage off in that fight, but then we stayed in the back line the entire time, so we tried to avoid as much damage as possible. Fat wave in right, we're gonna go ahead and clean this up. Looks like they're making a play for the Pyromancer. We're not level 20, so we are gonna kinda prioritize farm. We're gonna go ahead and jump over the wall, try to clear this mini wave pretty quick so we can start making a play for the tower. It looks like their whole team is in left. Instead of rotating over, we're just gonna press this tower and then maybe make a play for the Phoenix. We're kind of hoping that they're all caught up in a team fight and they're going to be distracted. That might buy us a window to get this Phoenix. 
We're making a play for it. I don't think we have the time to wait for this minion wave, especially with Erlong here. If we can outbox this Erlong, we might be able to get it. We're just landing our autos. We're going to jump on them, use our ultimate, kind of scare them off a little bit. They're still fighting in mid. We lost that minion wave due to Erlong's ability, so we are going to have to fall back right here. Oh no, why didn't we back? Oh, because he's backing. We think we can sneak in with this minion wave. Enemy missing. Enemies in the right jungle. We're going to try to get some basics. I don't think we're burning it down quick enough. We're going to have to fall back right here. We're able to pin the Erlong to our obelisk. We keep landing basics on him. We hear Baba Yaga. We are in a lot of trouble. We're going to jump away. We use our Aegis, but it doesn't matter. We go down. As soon as Erlong rotated back and cleared that second minion wave, or the first full minion wave, we should have realized that we did not have the timing to make a play for the Phoenix. We were able to get the tower, but unfortunately not the Phoenix. We were able to complete Atalanta's bow, and next we're going to be going into Odysseus's bow, or Oboe. It's going to provide 40% attack speed, and it has a passive that every fourth basic attack is going to trigger a chain lightning, damaging the target up to four nearby enemies for a total of 15 damage, plus 60% of your total basic attack power. So whenever we deal damage to an enemy, it's going to kind of disperse the damage to anybody standing near them. It doesn't reduce the damage, it just adds more damage. I feel like we had a very strong early game, and then we kind of lacked in our mid game, and then Anubis kind of carried our team through the mid game. And now we're starting to get to that late game where we're really dealing some damage. We need we're level 20, and we're just going to group with our team kind of from this point on. We try to pin him to the obelisk, but he's able to dash to the backside. If he was on the front side, we might have gotten him right there. We're going to try to stay near this Anubis in the back line. We're going to go ahead and clear this wave. Has been slain. While our team is fighting in mid, we're going to try to split push and get this left Phoenix. Anubis is getting pressured by the Erlong. We're going to rotate in and try to help. We jump over the wall. We also had a pillar on him. We use our ultimate just to try to get as much damage as possible before this fight. We miss a lot of basics right there. Erlong does have Pestilence, so he does have 20% anti-heal if we get too close to him. We have our minion wave. We're going to go ahead and start working on this tower. Kuzumbo is going to run in there for us. He's taking a lot of damage. We're going to get the tower, set up an obelisk, pin the Erlong Shen. Poseidon's falling back. We're going to try to get Anubis to fall back with us. We set up our obelisk. Anubis uses his ultimate. This is not the best fight, so we're trying to get Anubis to fall back. Okay. We're going to set up a ward so we can try to make a play for the fire giant. Between Anubis, Poseidon, and myself, I believe we have enough damage to get it. Oh, looks like we're just going to back. So, we have our Oboe online. Our attack speed just Thanks. went through the roof. Sorry? And we're not capped out. So, the cap is 2.5. We are currently sitting at 2.42. So, we have no wasted attack speed with this build right now. And we're going to go ahead and snag this damage since Poseidon is in mid. We 
We see that the enemy soul is kind of pushing by herself. We're going to rotate over with the Cali. We hit over there too. Cali's able to clean her up. Now we're going to kind of rotate back. Start hunting the enemy team. Erlong's on the Kuzumbo, so we're going to start making our way there. Babiaga and Mulan are also there. We're going to set up our Obelisk. We use our two, we miss our two. We're just going to land some basics. What a great Obelisk. He is pinned there and there's nothing he can do. We're able to get the pick onto the Erlong. We use our ultimate to get the set. Now we're going to be making a play for the Baba Yaga. She's in her ultimate. We're able to get a triple kill. Now we're just going to focus this Mulan. We use our Obelisk. We pin her to the wall. And we're able to get a quad or kill right there. Our team definitely helped us out right there. But our build allowed us to just kind of bypass all those protections and just melt the enemy team. We should be able to get a right Phoenix right here. It is a D side. That is if we don't just end the game. Soul's going to be up pretty soon. So we're probably just going to play it safe and try to get as many Phoenixes as possible before the final push. We're able to get the right Phoenix. We're going to go ahead and clean up this minion wave. We're going to jump onto the enemy's soul. We miss our two. We're able to clean up the enemy soul. So we got two phoenixes. Their enemy team is about to respawn. So we're just going to fall back and make a play for fire giant while they clean up minion waves and try to push up their lanes. We're going to set up an obelisk, so our basic attacks are going to deal more damage. We take a decent amount of damage. We definitely could have avoided that knockup if we were trying to play super safe. We have enough money for a speed potion. We're going to go ahead and pop that, sell our boots, and then we're going to be going into Titan's Bane for our final item. Titan's Bane is going to provide us 40 power and 20% penetration. It has a passive that your first ability cast gains 20% penetration. This occurs once every 10 seconds. So there is a percent penetration cap of 40%. We're getting 20% from Atalanta's bow and we're getting the other 20% from Titan's Bane. The passive from Titan's Bane will actually allow you to go over this cap. So if Mulan has a 100 protections, we're going to deal damage to her as if she only had 60 protections. And if we use an ability and get that additional 20%, we're going to be dealing damage as if she only had 40 protections. Our team's making a play for the left Phoenix. We're going to go ahead and clean up the Primal Fury. This is going to spawn a enhanced minion wave in each lane. So we should have some fire primal minions which are going to be really hard to deal with. We just got to kind of wait for them to push up to the Titan, and I think that's going to be enough pressure for us to close out this game if we don't do it sooner. We're going to set up a ward. Go ahead and drop the enemy speed buff. Soul is rotating to mid. We're just going to work on this left Phoenix. This should go down relatively quickly. Callie's tussling with three in mid. She jumps away. Erlong rotates in. We're going to use our two. That knocks him out of his mink form. Get some basics. Ooh, that chunks, doesn't it, Erlong? Poseidon's able to clean up one. Anubis is able to clean up another. And we're going to start pressuring the Titan. We should be able to close this one out. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. That really helps these videos out. If you feel like you learned anything at all, check out the channel and subscribe for more content. These stats for this game will be posted in just a moment. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you have a great day. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.